Welcome back to TechNet Radio. Today we're talking about the future, and your hosts Blaine Barton and John Baker welcome Jonathan Klutz, Director of the Strategic Prototyping Group here at Microsoft. Tune in as we take a sneak peek into some of the technologies that we may see five to ten years from now as we take a tour of Microsoft's home of the future. From whole house integrated technology, PCs that don't require a keyboard, to high-tech media rooms, you don't want to miss this. Blaine, the mic is yours. Hello and welcome to IT Time Radio. I'm your host, Blaine Barton, a senior IT pro evangelist here at Microsoft. And with me today, I have my friend, Pierre, and of course, the co-host of the show, John Baker, out of Atlanta. How you doing today, John? Doing great, Blaine. How's everyone doing? Good, doing good, doing good. Um, we got a pretty exciting topic today. We're going to be talking about futures, and I have a Mr. Jonathan Klutz, the Director of Strategic Prototyping Group here at Microsoft. So welcome, Jonathan. Thanks. Great to be here. Great to have you. Jonathan, I'm going to talk a little bit about you. You've got a great background. You, you lead the group that creates prototypes of technologies that you look out you know, five to ten years in the future. Um, your, your, your team you know, can see tangible realizations of, of ideas and technologies and you know, that, that, that you guys believe will really enhance people's productivity, lifestyle, and entertainment. So that's exciting and great topic today. So it looks like part of your charter uh, at, the, at the group there is also to uh, create, manage, and operate the Microsoft Home. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. So a pro, it's a prototyping uh, facility located there in the Redmond campus. Um, so a little bit about you, you, you know, worked for Microsoft for 20 years, that's a long time, uh, you know, experiences in usability, uh, the kids program, MSN, uh, in the systems area, um, for, and also it looks like you had a couple different roles within the prototyping group. Yeah, that's um, right. Your, uh, your, it looks like your first full-time uh, position was program manager of prototyping group. Uh, when, when Microsoft really initiated the consumer and interactive television uh, efforts under Craig Monday. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Okay. And uh, you currently serve uh, as a representative as well to the Board of Directors, which is awesome, um, for both the Internet Home Alliance and the Continental Automated Buildings Association, or CABA boards. So that's great. Um, what's also kind of dear to my heart, I noticed a little bit of your background, is you, you've actually spent some time in the music business, um, and I'm also a drummer. I just built a, a new music studio here at my home that I just finished last month, um, and you've owned and managed several recording studios in addition to performing and producing music on your own. What kind of, what kind of instruments do you play? Um, well, I, I actually uh, studied voice in uh, college, but um, uh, my uh, main instrument is piano. I've played piano since I was eight. Excellent, excellent. So uh, just to kind of wrap up your bio here, uh, you also worked for Tandy. Well, you, put, you know, go back and uh, you know, go back a few years there, and, and uh, several other small computer companies. And once again, you you studied music and um, audio engineering at Indiana University, and and received a bachelor's uh, in liberal arts at the University of Washington. You know, that kind of hurts because uh, I went to Washington State University, and I'm a I'm a cougar, so we're gonna have to end the conversation now. This uh, no, I'm just joking. Uh, but welcome, we can, you know, huskies and cougars can't they just all get along? That's right. Um, also, you know, what's, what's neat and also a little dear to my heart is um, you, you, you hold some patents uh, or patent applications, and I know what that takes. I, I have one, a patent as well. So a lot of work goes into that, and, you know, a lot of your technologies and related system software, user interface design, some of these patents that you've done, that's, that's very impressive. And uh, to, to kind of wrap things up, you, you married a formal Microsoft in, uh, employee, and uh, you, have a, you have a son in college. So. Right. That's, that's really your bio there, um, but I want to know, really kicking this interview off, is what was your first computer experience? Can you think back uh, to those days? Sure. So uh, probably the, the, the one, and again, of course, this, this kind of computer experience is really going to date me, so I'll, I'll just put that out up front, right? Uh, but my first computer that I ever owned was a Timex Sinclair. And to give you an idea about this computer, you know, Sinclair computers were made in England, and they brought it to the United States at Timex. And it was about the size, I don't know, maybe about that big total, right? It was thin, had a membrane keyboard, it had a, a whopping 2K of memory, right? And um, so, you know, again, you, you programmed it all in BASIC, 
and hooked it to your TV and used the cassette recorder to record all the tapes and that kind of thing. So that was really my first kind of personal computer experience. But, but then the other one that, that's worth uh, sharing, again, that will really date me, is I took a computer course in college now. Remember, I was a music major when, when I was in college, so I was a uh, adjunct computer person. I wasn't a computer science student, so all the computer science students, they got the terminals, right, and they were using it. I had to take my class literally on punch cards. So it was Fortran 77 on punch cards. Well, I think the uh, Fortran 77 on punch cards is aging you more than the uh, Sinclair computer. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> punch cards. Uh, no one out there knows what punch cards are anymore. <laughs> So uh, you're, you're the director of, uh, of strategy or prototyping group, and uh, Microsoft Home. I've been, that, that thing is constantly updated uh, up at the. Uh, that's at the EBC, right? The Microsoft Home yeah, that's uh, right. facility. Is it, are you always doing updates on that facility, or? Yeah. So we um, uh, the it's in the Microsoft uh, Executive Briefing Center, and we built the original one about 1994, and we do upgrades. You know, about every. Uh, well, we're only updates all the time, about every six months, but then we update it in kind of a major way about every two years, right? So we'll replace all the different uh, scenarios and things that we're showing. Um, uh, otherwise, we end up showing the recent past, right? You know how fast technology moves. So if we're, if we're not kind of always thinking of what's next, um, we quickly age, right? Yeah, that's true. Okay, well, I've been around the, being in East Region, we get around the country a fair amount, and we have several MTCs, and a couple I've been to, they have like a mini version of that Microsoft Home out at the uh, EBC. Uh, are you guys responsible for maintaining that, or do you provide the uh, input on those? We actually don't. We're not involved in, in, in the ones that are in the MTCs, although um, a lot of those are really focused a lot more on kind of showing um, where Microsoft is in the consumer uh, field today. So like they might feature more of our shipping products like Zoom or Connect or those kind of things. Where the Microsoft Home is purely a vision facility. We, we almost don't show any Microsoft products at all. Everything that we build and, and showcase are prototypes of technologies that we think are, you know, five to ten years out. Okay. okay. I'm assuming we have, uh, are there the hardware partners and other people that are involved with that? There are other vendors that are involved in getting in, in stuff in there? And, and how do they get it to you, or, or do you guys find it? Well, my team is responsible for really making and, and deciding all the prototypes that are there. Um, obviously, we have to work with partners or other people and to enable uh, some of these prototypes to be built. But, but we don't, for example, uh, do partnerships around either product placement or any kind of marketing partnerships. It's purely a Microsoft Vision facility. And so it's much more about the, how the software can enable uh, things in your life uh, than it is about specific, maybe even hardware or physical technologies. Yeah, that's that's great. You know, one thing I'd like to, to hear about a little more is where are some of these Microsoft homes uh, located? Maybe you can share kind of what's currently is going on um, in the home and then maybe where you, where, what you're working on in the future. Yeah, so the, there's only one Microsoft home. Uh, Microsoft home is in, uh, you know, Redmond, Washington here on the main campus. It's part of the Executive Briefing Center. Um, and as far as the, the corporation goes, it's the only one uh, in existence of the pure vision uh, standpoint. My team did do a fun project a few years ago where we worked with Disney. And so there's actually a home at uh, Disneyland in California, um, and it's kind of a hybrid. So there's a few what we uh, like to call aspirational ideas, uh, so concepts that you know aren't available yet, you can't go to the store and buy. Um, combined with, you know, basically our shipping products around everything from, you know, Windows 7 and Media Center uh, to the Zoom product line to Windows Phone 7, all those kind of things integrated into an experience. And it's really designed for a place uh, for the public to be able to kind of see all of our products working together along with some future concepts from the Microsoft Home. Because the Microsoft Home is actually a private facility, so the public isn't available uh, isn't able to actually come and visit it. Uh, it's open for our partners, uh, press, um, individual uh, customers, and that kind of thing who have been invited by Microsoft to come visit. That's that's pretty cool. So really, it's it's VIP, uh, if you will, uh, by invitation only to go in and, and see the the home. I've been through the home myself on campus, hey. and uh, it's it's quite impressive. In fact, I think we have a clip here, a video on a little bit about Microsoft Home. Uh, I believe we're going to play this, correct? Let's, yep. let's, let's take a look. The Microsoft Home is a place to explore and share scenarios that could transform the way we live in the years ahead. 
Here you can get a glimpse of technologies that illustrate the possibilities for computing five to ten years into the future. Built as a full-scale model home in the company's executive briefing center, the Microsoft Home shows what domestic life can be like in a world where we can interact with computers in more natural ways. Where expert systems keep us informed and help us make better decisions. Where devices and displays are seamlessly integrated into our environment. And where the physical and digital worlds come together to provide new experiences. The technologies illustrate how computing that works on our behalf can help us live healthier and more sustainable lives, manage and track a wealth of information, and stay connected to the people important to us. The Microsoft Home helps us explore the richness of the world around us, making learning a fun and immersive experience. The Microsoft Home reflects technologies Microsoft and their partners expect to see becoming more useful and practical for everyone in the years to come. Just as PCs and mobile phones began as expensive gadgets for early adopters, it became affordable and essential tools for all of us. The scenarios in the home today will be a seamless part of our lives tomorrow. Wow, that was quite impressive, uh, a video there kind of showing what's going on in the future. So what currently are you working on day to day um, in, your, in your role right now, or can you even talk about it? Well, there's a few things that I could talk about, although a lot of it I, I can't, frankly. Because, um, again, and maybe that's a good place to start. Really what my role is is uh, to uh, run a team that thinks about how technologies might enhance our lives in the future. So as part of that, of course, we do the Microsoft Home, and we feature things there. But we do a lot of uh, prototypes that are exploratory, that are used by uh, chief executives like Craig Mundy, who might uh, demonstrate it at a, at a major conference, or uh, even prototypes that are used to just spur thinking on in the company, right? Let's explore this area. Let's see how we might look at that differently. And so um, in, in many ways, we're kind of a concept car team, right? So we make the thing for the auto show, right? Um, and so in, in many cases, we're, we're thinking about some uh, – current trend or that kind of thing. Some of the big ones we're looking at right now, of course, are social networking, um, also this uh, connection between physical and virtual worlds, right? So everything from being able to have information, you know, associated with your objects to even virtual reality type experiences where you might um, be able to leverage that and, and enhance your kind of physical world through more virtual assets. That's, that's very, very cool. So, hey, once again, it's it's been great having you on the on the IT Time radio show. Uh, once again, Jonathan Kletz uh, from Director of the Strategic Prototyping Group. And, of course, I have my co-host, Mr. John Baker, uh, as well, out of Atlanta. So, once again, Jonathan, any other uh, closing words? Uh, maybe where you could uh, point people to uh, to get more information about Microsoft Home? So, the Microsoft Home has a great uh, site. And probably the best place is to go out to the Press Pass site, so Microsoft Press Pass, um, and search on the word the Microsoft Home. Uh, and then you'll find a bunch of pictures and information that's available there uh, about the facility. Well, excellent. Once again, thanks for being on IT Time Radio. I'm your host, Blaine Barton, Senior IT Pro Evangelist here in Tampa, Florida, and co-host John Baker in Atlanta. Thanks, John, for being here. It's great. Thank you. All right. That's a wrap. Thanks for being on the show.